Hey, it's Tommy Mars. How are you guys doing out there? I hope everybody's well. Hope everybody's staying safe out there and being okay. All right, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to drink a little bit of coffee. I'm thinking about getting a haircut. Seriously, is anyone out there a hairstylist? Because I need a haircut bad. And I'm going to continue on this rabbit hole of a journey that's been Harry Styles. And if you've been following along, number one, I appreciate you. Because this is kind of fun doing it with all of you. But number two is, if you've been following along, we'll call it the Harry Styles series. That's what we're going to call it. Harry Styles series. If you've been following along, you've known that I kind of started with, well, no, I did start with the Sledgehammer cover video. And I've been kind of working my way up. So this is, I think this is the fourth video in this series, I guess you would say. On the last video, which was Kiwi Live on the Late Late Show, I asked the question, which song should I look at next? And in a way, I kind of am relying on all of you to give me your best advice, opinions of where I should go. I've got some really, really great comments. Honestly, I appreciate every single one of them. Even if it's just a, the name of the song, like one was just The Chain. One was just Thank You. No, thank you. You know, all these kind of things mean a lot. And like I said, I'm kind of relying on you where I should go because I am new pretty much to Harry Styles, especially, you know, listening to his songs, watching these videos, these live, especially these live covers. You know, there's a ton of them out there because I've been searching. I just haven't been watching. And it's been hard because I want to kind of save it for for us, you know, for us because we're doing this together. So I like that. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, the winner of the comment uh, poll, I guess you would say the vote, was the Fleetwood Mac cover, The Chain, in the live lounge. So it, it was it was actually really, really tough because this, this one and Tiny Desk were the two I was kind of going in between. I just want you to know. This one, this this battle, but the, the, the Tiny Desk is coming. I have to watch that. I'm really fired up to see that. But this one, and that's what I said, so this is where I am at. So let's get started, man. All right, so this is this is in a live lounge. I want to tell you too. The chain is probably one of my two favorite songs from Fleetwood Mac. You can go your own way is probably well, actually, you know what? I need to do that list because I could probably write all off ten Fleetwood Mac songs. But this is actually one of my favorite, favorite songs. It's okay, it's top three for sure. So it's like, you know, it's one of those things where you go, it was like Sledgehammer. I went into it with a little bit of reservation because the, the original was so great. But as you know, I've been kind of blown away by Harry Styles. So let's go. This is great. There's our girl, uh, Sarah on the drums. It's like my new favorite drummer. Oh, that's nice. That's a Rickenbacker bass. Gibson guitar. I mean, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with that. You know, it's like with guitars, it's like there's like a sweet sound. You take a, a Les Paul, any, you know, Gibson or, or, or a Fender Strat, and you plug it through like a Marshall head, like a preferably like a 68 Plexi, Marshall Plexi or something. That is like one of the best sounds musically in the world. But another one is the bass guitar. So if he's playing the Rick, Getty Lee is one of... Well, he's not just one of my favorites. He's one of the best bass players that's ever lived in the band Rush. He used to play a Rickenbacker a lot back in the day. And I one of the sweetest sounds for the bass guitar, for in my opinion, is when you take a Rickenbacker and you plug that into an Ampeg SVT head, that is all tube, tube driven. The, the, the sound is, to me, it's just, it's creamy. It's, it's bliss in terms of the bass guitar. So anyway, I just want to say that these two, these two instruments right now, just starting, oh, 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 you had me there. Listen to the wind blow, watch the sun just the tone of his voice. My goodness. Running in the shadow. That background vocal is phenomenal. Okay, so a lot of you have commented in the last video. I, I did, and I goofed it. I actually, I want to, I want to say that I goofed that. I thought it was uh, the same person that was in the sledgehammer, and it was not. 
And I just want to make that clear. Uh, when I went back, actually, when we watched, I was like, oh, I made a mistake. That is not the same person. I would just say vocally, they're both just stellar. I think, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. I think this is the former person that I was talking about, like in the um, the Kiwi Life that was in that that version of the band or whatever it is. That's what I think. If I'm wrong, just let me know. And if if you actually if you know who this person is, comment below. I, I I'd like to know who this is because this voice is really this voice is awesome, and them together is great. This man is just a great singer. How could you not like this dude? Like, just right there. Did you uh, did you see? He just nailed that. He he nailed it. I, he, he's just so impressive, man. Love that Sarah's on the rack tom, the floor tom, kick drum. Just keeping time with the hi hat. Listen to the wind blow. Love those claps. See, you know what's great? It's not just like a straight back beat. So they're clapping. So they've got that time. And then she's a little off and boom, 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 boom. And hits the little, you know, it sounds like maybe, maybe a, a China really quick, uh, really quick or just that the quick hit of the, the cymbal and then stops it. She's got such great timing. I just, I, just, I, like, I just like the way she approaches songs on the drums. Sarah, I'm talking about. I love the way she approaches stuff on the drums. I'm such a fan. Running in the shadow. Everybody that listens to me that goes to soundvapors.com or listens to any of the interviews with any of the artists that I've interviewed, and a lot of times I get caught up in the harmonies. So I'll interview some like a huge artist, somebody that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, okay, for their music. I'll interview them, and I wind up getting lost in the harmonies of the songs, and I almost feel bad sometimes. It might even be a guitar player or a drummer, and I'm like, yeah, but the harmony at this point... I get lost in it. So if you if you know me and if you guys are just coming to know me, harmonies are a really big part of musically for me, it's it's right up there. And when I'm writing a song, that's one of the things I think about actually is, ooh, what a good harmony fit here. I love the harmony, the harmonic aspect of what we are seeing right here. I'm I'm sure other people have said it or reacted to it or or whatever they've done. But it's underrated. I just I don't feel like I've heard enough about these harmonies. Just, oh. You know what he did there? I, I I felt that. Okay, so he took that that earmuff from the the, uh, the earphone and he kind of he just scooted it back because he had to hit that note. I just want to say I'm not saying that's exactly you know where we, he, exactly what he's doing, but I've been in a studio situation and there was just something a run that was just giving me trouble. I was trying to lay down this vocal, and so what I started doing in the studio it's now it's become a habit. I do it all the time, and I'm when I'm tracking vocals. And the thing is, you don't want to take off the, the earphone too much because you don't want that to bleed through the mic and all the other stuff. I mean, you can clean it up in post, but it's just better to have a clean vocal in there. So I'll like scoot it off just a little bit so I can hear my natural voice, not through the microphone, not through the, the coloring of the speaker or, or any, or any processing, processing it's going through. I've seen him do this now uh, a couple times in a live performance. And it just kind of hits home because I, I I feel that because you're just like you just got to hear your natural voice hitting that note and of course he hits it beautifully. Great vocal all around. His hers ah. Oh. 
I'm waiting for this because the song is going to take off. It's going to, yeah, it's going to explode a little bit. I am so excited to see how they attack this. Little SM57, sure SM57 mic on the snare, if you were wondering. Oh, that bass line. Okay, so that is one of the best John McVie bass lines, in my opinion, from Fleetwood Mac. That is just, it's so, it is one of the best bass lines he's ever laid down. And, oh, I just love the way this dude played it. This is, this is excellent. And I'm, so now, for me, guitar, guitar-wise, I want to see, let's see what he does here. Because this is, this is essential to the song. The guitar that's about to happen is underlying, so you're going to have vocals going over this guitar, but this guitar is still soloing in the background. This is very important to the song. I'm excited. Yeah, man, that was... Okay, before we go further, uh, two things. There's so much going on right here. The, the beat, everything is so great. Harry completely nailed that. I, I love when he goes in that upper register and he kind of pushes. And I said that before. I, I Man, oh, man. So, so impressive. Uh, I, I want to say the guitar, though, man, he definitely is making Lindsey Buckingham. That's a guitar player for Fleetwood Mac. He's making him proud. He, he's slaying. Slaying it. I just love... Sarah's swing on the drum. She just has a swing about her. And she just... its It's like this... It's like um, being in the pocket, but this confidence, but it's like this, it's just incredible. She has just great timing and such, just the way she just, it, man, she's great. Oh. Wow. Wow. That was, that was amazing. I want to say something here. If I, if there's anybody watching that's, I mean, cause you know, I'm, it's not just fans of Harry that's going to watch this. You know, there's other people too. Uh, there's probably friends of mine that are going to watch this. If you are not on this train, if you actually think that, okay, let me say this. If you just watch this with me or you watch it on your own or you've heard that before and, and you don't think that's great, musically, I, I, I cannot, I cannot help you. <laughs> I cannot help you. That is, that was great. That was, I am so blown away. That is, seriously, I think that I am becoming such a big fan and I make a list of concerts that I want to see every year. I can't wait till all this, the COVID stuff is over. So we can resume our lives and go to concerts and all that kind of stuff. And maybe I can actually play a few shows. I am putting him at the top of my list of people I have to see in concert at some point. I, it, it might even be come to my city. It, I, I might have to go somewhere and see him play. Actually, you know, it'd be really cool. I'd love to go see him in Madison Square Garden. I'm in the U.S., so I'm in, in, in America. So I think I'd love to go see him play at Madison Square Garden or... You know what would be cool? And has if he has, uh, let me know. I would love to see Harry Styles play the Hollywood Bowl. I think that would be that would be magic. That'd be pure magic, right? If he's played there, uh, let me know. If he hasn't, if you agree, yeah, let me know. I think it would be really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to see this guy. As soon as this stuff is all lifted and, and we're able to go see concerts, this is going to be really top of my list. He's just a great performer. And... I think the last thing I'm going to say is in a live setting, a lot of times it just doesn't translate. It just doesn't for whatever reason. There's a lot of great singers when you see them live. Some of you will admit of what I'm talking about. It's just not the same experience for me so far. I, I, I that Kiwi recorded version was, was awesome. I, I've listened to it quite a bit actually. Uh, so when I'm shooting hoops, 
Uh, I've mentioned this before. If you if you know me, as I'm editing podcasts, you know, editing articles coming in to put on the website and stuff, I, I take a 10, 15 minute break and I shoot hoops. This is that's kind of like my break. That's my uh, that's what keeps me sane, I think. And I take and I put in my headphones and I pull up something and I just kind of take a song and I'll actually put it just on repeat and just go with that one song and just kind of lose myself in that and shoot hoops. I've been doing that with Kiwi. So I'm a fan of his recorded stuff, but I I think his live stuff is, I'm not going to say it's better. It's just th- th- that energy, you know, that energy you can't capture, that everybody, every artist tries to capture that live energy in a studio. You do things like having the band play in the same room, uh, trying not to do as many overdubs. Everybody tries to capture that. We all do. Everybody does. That live energy that it's just hard to to attain on a recorded medium, that comes out on a song or whatever. He just, he, that, that lightning is so, is such a big force when, when him and his band is playing live. I I just really enjoy it. All right, man. So that was it. That's my, that's my full on reaction to the chain. Thank you so much for commenting this and telling me to go to this song. Thank you so much. Seriously. That's awesome. Okay. I'm going to do the tiny desk next. I just want you to know that. After Tiny Desk, so that's coming, everybody name the next song, live, recorded, video, whatever, whatever you want me to do. The song that gets the most comments, that's the song I'm going to do after Tiny Desk. Feel me? It's going to be good. All right. So the other part of it is, you know, I guess on these videos, everybody asks, hey, could you like and subscribe and notification bell? I think everybody knows how to use YouTube. So if you want to do that, do it. I actually really appreciate it. And I guess, you know, you'll know when I keep uploading these these episodes. And that's the thing with Harry Styles. This is, these aren't going away. So I, I'm going to continue to do these. And I've got a lot of material to get through. So we may be on this journey for a while. I don't know how long, but we're going to be on this journey together for a while. And I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun. So if you want to get at me outside of here, T-O-M-M-Y-M-A-R-Z-B-A-N-D, Tommy Mars Band, come follow me on Twitter or Instagram, but just make sure you say hello because I love interaction. I love the interaction. I like saying hi and everybody and everything. Let me know you came to me from this video or one of these videos. I get a kick out of it. All right. I am out. I'm going to go like go get a haircut or something and then come back and watch this video. All right. See you guys. Peace.